Welcome to T's 10 Tips for Surviving the First Couple Hours of Planetside. There's a lot to take in and most can be ignored, but I'll try to run through some tips and concepts that are critical to having fun, surviving a bit more, and understanding what the heck is going on. First things first, go to Settings, Interface, and under Empire Coloring, I suggest making all the enemies red and your teammates blue or something friendly looking. Note the squad members will be green. Regardless of what faction I am, I do this as I really don't care whether the enemy is NC or TR, I just want the fastest way to see them and shoot them rather than my teammates. Second, the map should become your best friend, and the personal waypoint tool is a must use the majority of the time. Here I spawn to a new area without knowing what's going on, I'd instantly go to the map and pick a place to go. The personal waypoint is used by right clicking on the map and you pick a place that only you can see. It shows up both on the minimap and it stands out on your HUD. This tool is especially critical to getting back to where I was before dying, uh, marking a sniper or a sunderer I saw before dying, or just getting out of some confusing base. I use it constantly, especially when trying to reposition myself or trying to figure out where the enemies are and where I need to be. Third, how do you gain experience? Objectives, healing, spot bonuses, ammo, killing vehicles. Most every beginner video says play medic to start for XP, and although this clip shows how easy it can be, granted each of these reses is the same as getting a kill experience wise. This is not always the case. Often with medic, you have to jump into the line of fire and there's usually a reason that person has died. So you're often getting yourself killed and person who gets rezzed as well. I just got lucky in this clip. Easiest way to gain experience is just to spot enemies. Press the Q key when they're in the center of your reticle and with, if they die within 10 seconds of spotting, you'll get a chunk of XP. Whether it's a vehicle or the person, just remember not to do it when behind enemy lines or near enough for enemies to hear because your character audibly shouts and will draw attention to you. Another great but underutilized method for experience that is less risky than medic is to be an engineer and drop ammo for teammates. You continue to get XP no matter where you are as it automatically refills missing ammo and if there is a fairly fixed front line where you've dropped them you can get crazy stacks of experience. Lastly, killing vehicles is huge. The bigger vehicles give hundreds of experience for killing them and even just a little contribution can go a long way. Fourth tip, don't buy guns yet. Buy sights and character upgrades first. Guns are usually a thousand certs each and really don't change much of the gameplay for you. The starting guns are amazing and the other guns are just variations of that same gun, whereas sights completely change the game. Check out this clip in a nighttime battle where you really can't see anything. 30 or 45 cert sight instantly able to improve my gameplay and change the experience. On top of this, your character's abilities scale drastically. Um, by upgrading them with the cert points and some cert, some upgrades only take 1, 10, um, or 100 certs and make a big difference versus the gun that costs a thousand certs and you might not notice the difference. The next two tips are about positioning and the first one is to close off a side. In plant side people can and will shoot you from anywhere. Early on, you won't even know where it's coming from, but what you can do is make sure to always close off some side to danger. Rather than 360 degrees, try to get a base, teammates, or wall behind you to allow you to focus on, say, 200 degrees of direction. In this clip, I was super exposed on the rooftop, trying to shoot down a spawn, but decided to get out of there where my team can cover me. I'd previously been on the roof shooting people on the other team who were almost in the exact sp same spot I am now, but they didn't have roof coverage. Whereas if you look at the map, I have plenty of teammates way up above keeping enemies off their roof. And I can continue just focus on this doorway. The only place I'm exposed is someone coming around the right where I'm willing to take that risk given all the teammates behind me and I can keep peeking the right corner. Always be moving when in the open. I basically just always assume a sniper is watching me even when it seems calm. Like in this clip where I thought we just chased off the enemy and I bring up my menu to actually record tip number one about teammate colors and within seconds get sniped by someone just waiting for someone to stop moving. This mindset has saved my life so many times on planet side. That strategy saves me here when I just spawn in not realizing what's going on. The map didn't show me any units so I have very little info. All the sunders made it seem like it must be calm. I immediately start running and the moment I sort of stand still to assess the situation I get sprayed. 
Continuing to move gets me behind cover and keeps me alive long enough to heal up and start to study the map. There are just so many people in this game, you never know who is waiting to get the jump on you, or just happens to be in the right place to see you, like me and this poor infiltrator who was doing everything right, but just the wrong place at the wrong time. The next three tips are just about awareness. Obviously as you play more you will better understand what is happening around you, but that will drastically be sped up by looking at the map more. I did already talk about the way, the personal waypoint, but this is just a tip to just pull up your map more often. Anytime you die or in a safe place, open up the map and study it for a few seconds. It can help you pick a better class for the situation, know where your squad mates are and how to help them, or where the most critical capture point or defense needs to take place. Every enemy spotted or on personal radars will show up so it can be a big clue as to whether the enemy was wiped out or whether your teammates were wiped out, where you need to be, and what the battlefield situation looks like even though you're not there. The eighth tip is to always remember to reposition. After a couple kills or even in between each spray or each rocket, repositioning is key to a long life. In this instance, I get a good flank as my teammates are pushing from the east and I get on their wall from the south. I don't see any return fire, hear spotters, or seem to be seen yet, so I keep going, but still continue to strafe as much as reasonable in case someone has a bead on me. I get a few good picks, but as soon as my position is compromised, I'm out of there, and reposition to get the jump on anyone coming up the elevator, assuming I'll still be there. In this clip, I see there is mayhem to the left, so I head to the right for a flank instead. Quick note on the minimap, you'll see a sender that is seemingly flying through these buildings, but he is on the ground and we are on an upper level, so in this case the minimap can be pretty confusing. Here I absolutely botch this free kill, and at this moment I know I've missed my chance. I'm now on the radar, and besides this guy, I'm not sure who else is aware of my position, so I book it out of there to reposition. The sprint in this game is actually exceptionally fast and there, there are even certs to make your sprint go even faster. So don't ever hesitate to just turn and sprint away to cover in order to get a better position. In this case I made a mistake, reposition, was able to get the kill and open up this flank for my team to take the choke. The ninth tip and final awareness tip is to avoid leaving yourself without an escape. Plan your cover and plan how to mitigate the most angles of attack. One quick side note is to be careful when you accept a res. Unless you know your teammate has cleared the way, it can usually just be a trap with zero escapes. In this clip, I'm headed in to try to cut off this push up the hill. There aren't a lot of red dots, but I was recently fighting here and assumed they're still pushing, so I go left of this rock to reduce exposure down the hill and give myself a piece of cover in case I catch fire from up the hill. Catching fire from up the hill, I immediately head back behind the rock, heal up, and then re-engage knowing that I can get behind this cactus for probably even better cover, um, which I ended up needing. I take a second here to come up with a new game plan. We've lost the facility. I'm hurt. I'm going to head back to my Sunder. We then hear an orbital strike is coming. Although I'm outside the range, enough for my shield to probably keep me alive, I immediately immediately rush to the Sunder to switch to a light assault, which ends up saving me from the launch that comes from the blast. The last tip is short and sweet, as the headshots really matter in this game, where you're often seconds away from catching a explosion or something else that will kill you. Any life you can save by getting headshots and ending other people quicker will both net you more kills and keep you alive longer. With the right sights and just a little bit of recoil training in the training ground, you should be able to get quite a few headshots. I hope these tips were helpful for getting you started and having a great time with all the adventure of Planetside. Let me know in the comments if you'd like another 10 tips, but even quicker.